Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthews, and Mary Tyler Moore. I'm so tired, I can hardly keep my mouth open. <laughs> oh, come on, Rob, what do you say? We go home? That is a good idea. You better give Nutty a budge. <laughs> Don't you mean give Buddy a nudge? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think you're right on both counts. Hey, Nutty, come on, it's all over. Come on, come on. I'm yeah. listening, I'm listening. Look, after Alan does the shoehorn bit, he comes out We and... did that two hours ago. Well, why did you let me sit here and work on it? <laughs> Sleeping, buddy. But not restfully. Well, Rob, I'm glad I caught you. Alan wants you and Laura to go to the CIU dinner tonight and accept his award. Tonight? Why can't he accept it? Because he and I are, are on our way now to Chicago for an emergency meeting with a sponsor. Oh, that's terrible. Wrong. Anything that gets Mel out of town is great. No, we can share something sooner. This is the last minute. Why can't Buddy do it? Are you joking? What's the matter? I'm not good enough to pick up an award? Precisely. Why is mother named Jamel? Because she couldn't spell bleh. Rob, will you? I don't know, Mel. Look, Rob, if you want the glamour of being a head writer, you have to accept the problems. What glamour? <laughs> Working with people like me. I thought that was a problem. <laughs> you know, it could be. Well, Rob, I guess you're it. Why me? Why always me? Because you're so tall and willowy. Oh, thanks. Hey, listen, Rob, accept the award. You know, don't be embarrassed. Just take it and take all the credit you want. But don't forget to mention the people that made it all possible. The little folk like Buddy Sorrell. Yeah, he's right, Rob. There's nobody littler than Buddy. <laughs> Good luck, Rob. Good luck to me, too. What for you, too? My wife is cooking dinner tonight. Oh. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Good night, Rob. Good night. Or well, if there's anything Laura hates, it's a last-minute invitation. Well, now, Alan will consider it a very special favor. Oh, by the way, it's formal. For? Well, I hope my tux is pressed. Oh, it will be, Rob. You're a neat person. <laughs> and honey? Hi, what are you doing? Uh, I'm right in the middle of making an emergency costume for Richie. Well, you better start making an emergency costume for yourself. We're going to a formal dinner tonight. What do you mean, tonight? I'm tonight, after sundown. <laughs> to pick up that CIU award for him. Oh, Rob, I wish you'd have given me a little more notice. Honey, I'm giving you all the notice they gave me. What, do you have to go? I mean, do we have to? Couldn't someone else do it? Alan practically ordered me to go, okay? Well, I guess so. Oh, hey. Honey, would you uh, get my tux out and see if it's pressed? It's in the closet, I think. Okay. Well, Rob, I don't think it is in the closet. I haven't seen it in a long time. Oh, honey. It's all rolled up in my suitcase. You mean you never took it out? No, I don't ball me out. Just get it out and send it to be pressed, will you? All right, and then you pick it up on your way home? That's the deal. Okay. Well, honey, you still there? Yeah. Uh, buy a corsage from, from me. <laughs> when did I write a card from you? Well, just, just say you love yourself and sign my name. Darling, are you starting to take me for granted? Yeah. I'll get you for this. Bye. Bye. Ron? Yeah. Can you imagine? We have to go to a formal dinner. Not tonight. Tonight. Richie, do you absolutely positively have to have this for tomorrow morning? I need it. Science teacher said so. Well, why'd you wait to the last minute to tell me? I don't know. I think I forgot. Well, you know what? I think I'll just forget your allowance next week. You forgot it last week. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you know you're going to have to make a thundercloud costume? Yes, but I thought a thundercloud was an Indian, so I bought a bow and arrow set and feathers. For a science play? Well, I figured they'd have a rain dance or something. Okay, I'll take it from there. Oh, thanks, Millie. i got to make a few phone calls and get Rob's tux. Whatever I can do. Thank you. Why couldn't you be a regular clown? Why'd you have to be a bad clown? I'm a good clown. An airplane flies over me and seeds me. Seeds you? What in the world for? To make me rain on the crops. Listen, my Freddy's gonna be an ear of corn. You gonna rain on him? Sure. You want him to grow, don't ya? <laughs> oh, boy, I can see what kind of a night this is gonna be. What happened? I just remembered. The cleaner is closed. How am I gonna get Rob's tux pressed? Well, does it need it? Well, that depends on whether you're going to wear it or play football with it. <laughs> Is that it? Yes. It needs it. I'll press it for you. Can you? 
Laura, my father was a presser for 35 years. Oh, well, I, I just wouldn't want you to burn it or anything. Do I look like a firebug? No. Where's your steam In the linen closet. Look, what do I do with this? Just swish it around a little. You thought a thundercloud was an Indian, Robbie? Well, when I went to school, dear, he was an Indian. Did you have Indians in school in the olden days? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> books, dear. Back again. This will only take a few minutes. Oh, my goodness. What's the matter? What are you doing? I'm swishing. Lori, your hands, your hands. <laughs> <laughs> That'll rinse right off, won't it? Never. That's a permanent dye. <laughs> You know my black fur coat? You dyed it with this? Yeah, four years ago. <laughs> it's not coming off. Laura, you'll find that's one of your best permanent dyes. I already found that out, Millie. Why didn't you say something? I did. I distinctly said swish. Well, I did swish. With your hands? Well, you didn't say not to. Laura, swish means with a stick. Then you should have said with a stick. You wouldn't stir a pot of soup with your hands, would you? No, and I wouldn't stir it with a stick, either. You're getting awful touchy lately. Well, it's just that I don't understand why you didn't warn me, Millie. Well, who'd ever dream you'd put your hands in a pot of dye? I told you I never died before. Well, even a child would <laughs> die with your hands. Oh, hey, okay, so I'm not perfect. Oh, Millie, what am I gonna do? I don't know anything about dye. I thought you said you were an expert. Well, I know how to die, but I don't know how to undie. <laughs> well, who does know? Jerry. Jerry's a chemical genius. You think he can get it off? If he can't get it off, nobody can. He's got more bottles and chemicals than a drugstore. Oh, Millie, I hope he can do it. He can do it or I'll kill him. <laughs> I'll press the touch while he's getting that stuff off your hand. Okay. Mom, where are you going? I'm just next door to Reggie. Get away from the pot, dear. Go in your room and do your homework. Oh, no. Boy, Millie, I wish you had said something to me. Oh, how could you switch with that? Well, then you just said with a stick. Honey, the cleaner was closed. Laura? about the mess in the pot here? That's my costume for the play. What kind of a costume? A thundercloud suit. Oh, yeah. Mommy's doing it. Well, she's gonna have to do it tomorrow. But I have to wear it tomorrow. Where's your mother, Rich? But, Daddy, I need it for the play. Richie, don't whine. Where's your mother? She's over at Aunt Millie's. Oh, well, I better go get her. Hey, whoa, what are you doing? I've gotta finish my thundercloud suit. What, what needs to be done? Mommy's washing it. Oh, well, boy, it sure needs it. <laughs> Look. You let me do the thundercloud suit, but Mama will kill you if you mess this kitchen up. You go tell Mama that I'm home, will you? Okay. How does a kid get something this dirty? I'll get it! Uh, if that's Mama, you ask her what you did with my tuxedo. Mommy wants to talk to you, Daddy. Well, I can't come to the phone now. He can't come to the phone now. What a mess. Okay, Mommy. Mommy's coming home. Oh, good. Also, Mommy said not to put your hands in the pot of dye. <laughs> this uh, must be the one she means. <laughs> Honey, a couple of things have come up. Listen, Rob, I know how important this dinner is to you, dear, but I'm not going to be able to go. Why not? How's come mine got darker than yours? No, no, you didn't. Who 
didn't? What do you mean, who didn't? What, Look, uh, why don't you put up a sign you've got a booby trap in the kitchen like that? Bob, I told Richie to tell you on the phone. Oh, look at all those dying hands. How do you people get yourselves into situations like this? <laughs> Bob, if I said swish to you, wouldn't you use a oh. stick? What? Never mind. <laughs> Well, at least we match. <laughs> what are we going to do? We're going to get it off, is what we're going to do. Rob, it won't come off. Even Jerry couldn't get it off. He got it, too? No, Rob, on my hands. Yeah, and he's a chemical genius. With certain limitations. Well, hey, how about uh, makeup? No, we tried it, and it won't cover. Well, if we can't get it off, we're not going to that dinner. Boy, that is for sure. Well, what about Alan? I thought you said he practically ordered you to go. Honey, if we walked into the crystal room with our hands looking like this, people would think we were out of our minds. Well, couldn't you pretend it's a gag? A gag? Well, they know you're a comedy writer. Millie, that is positively in the worst taste. <laughs> well, it's not a matter of taste. Honey, you know what the CIU is, don't you? Well, of course. The Committee for Interracial Understanding. <laughs> What the award is for. Rob, we can't go like this. Even if Alan ordered me to. Unless you wore gloves. Hey, Dad, look at this neat baseball. Richie, I told Honey, you not. Honey, forget it. At least he looks like one of the family. <laughs> Flowers for Mrs. Petrie. I'll take him. Hold it. Not with those hands, Sonny. You better wash them before your mother sees them. Her hands are the same way. Sure, I'll bet they are. My daddy's too. Oh, the corsage. Yes, that'll uh, be four fifty, man. Uh, would you pay it? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> You're probably wondering about our hands. I, I didn't even notice them. I didn't even notice them. <laughs> Did you notice him? No, I did. Well, I did, but I thought you were all members of the mafia. <laughs> no, my son. We, we were uh, uh, making wine. No ink. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I keep the change. Thank you. That's a nice hobby, making ink. Hey. Well, can I have the? Uh, oh, yeah, the flowers. Yes. Thank you. That's a good hobby, making ink. Hi, right, folks. <laughs> just a little preview. What's going to happen to us tonight? But why didn't you just tell him what happened? But tell him we're dying a thundercloud suit, you mean? <laughs> well, the corsage is wilting and the CIU is waiting. We better get dressed. Well, honey, what about the hands? Well, I don't know, Rob. We just have to wear gloves. Well, that's fine for you, but you got a picture of me in a tuxedo trying to butter a roll with gloves on? Darling, <laughs> there's no alternative. Don't kid yourself. There's two alternatives, Buddy and Sally. Hey, hey Rob, uh, do me a favor, will you? Make it fast. I just threw an inside straight. Look at this. Six, seven, eight, nine, Jack. <laughs> Fellas, count me out. Your best hand I had all night. What's the matter, Rob? What's your problem? You ready for this? Yeah. I dyed my hands black. <laughs> Buddy? Are you there? Yeah, I, I thought I heard Mel say to dye him green. <laughs> Buddy, this is no joke. You really dyed your hands? Right. Can you see your way clear to go in my place? Rob, I can't. Pickles twisted her back this afternoon carrying out the garbage. She's in bed. Well, does she need you there? Yeah, every half hour I gotta turn her over. <laughs> why, you, why can't one of the other guys do it while you're gone? Are you kidding? Why do you think they're here? It takes all four of us to do it. <laughs> I gather from your tone of the conversation that you're not gonna go. Yeah, I like to. I can't. Now I understand. Not gonna. I depended on you. Oh, you can depend on me, Rob. Yeah, for what? For Sally's phone number. It's two seven. Thanks a lot. I have. Hey, want some good advice? What? You got a pair of gloves? Yeah. Wear them, pal. Thanks. <laughs> but he doesn't want to go. No, he can't. He's got to turn pickles over every half hour. <laughs> well, what's the difference, honey? Do I have any gloves? Well, you have that pair you got for Christmas. You mean with the fur lines? Think they'd be too warm? I don't. Nothing goes over worse at a formal dinner than smell a sweaty bunny fur. <laughs> Sally. Gee, do you think you can talk her into it? Well, I, if I can make it sound like a lot of fun. Well, in case you can't make it sound like enough fun, I think I'd better start All getting right. dressed. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Sal. Listen, uh, a funny thing happened on the way to that formal dinner. Look, Rob, uh, make it fast, will you? I'm kind of busy. Get to the punchline, huh? Sally, I didn't call you up to tell you a joke. Look, 
Laura and I were trying to dye a thundercloud suit. In the process, we dyed our hands, too. Oh, yeah, that was smart. You see, it's best to do all that stuff at once. <laughs> well, I've got to have somebody to go in my place. How about it? No, I can't go. I'm sorry. Why not? Well, because my hair is full of beer and eggs right now. <laughs> How did you get beer and eggs in your hair? I was attacked by a band of bootleg chickens. <laughs> Stop, come on, please. Rob, my Aunt Agnes is here tinting my hair. No chance, then. No, no chance, Rob. I'm sorry. You know, if you'd only call me sooner, I... Hey, I got a great idea. Does it have anything to do with wearing gloves? Yeah! Forget it. Bye, Rob. Bye, Sal. Sally can't make it. Nope. Rob, what are we gonna do? Well, honey, I can't go to that dinner wearing gloves. Well, I guess you'll just have to keep your hands in your pockets. Well, is it gonna be a little hard to eat? Rob, how can you think of eating at a time like this? Come on, let's get dressed. We'll probably miss dinner. I'm starved. <laughs> Rob! Okay. Gee. Darling, we're a half an hour late. Honey, I don't think we're gonna get away with this. <laughs> Well, I told you I could tell them there's something wrong with my hands, an allergy, something like that. But why work gloves? Why, well, they look more clinical. You mean clinical? <laughs> look like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> you only had three fingers. Come on, take them off. Come on, take these off. So much time's passed now, we're gonna miss the whole dinner anyway. If I don't get there in time for the award. Oh, honey, this isn't right. I look like a strangler. You're right. <laughs> well, you sure couldn't wear these to a formal unless you're part of the entertainment. Billy. Hey, whose are these? Jerry's. Jerry's? Well, actually, they're his mother's. His mother's? Yeah, she always leaves something at our house just so she'll have an excuse to come back. Boy, she must be. Yeah, she's built like Wyatt Earp. <laughs> hey, these fit. All I gotta do is chop these tops off. Rob, do me a favor and just jam them up your sleeves. And if you ruin those gloves, she's never gonna get to like me. Oh, this is ridiculous. I feel like Sophie Tucker. Yeah, but it doesn't look bad. What do we do about the buttons? I'll bite them off. Oh, Laura, don't let them lose the buttons. I won't, and I'll sew them back on tonight. Laura, didn't you forget something? What? Aren't you gonna ask me to sit with Richie? Oh, Millie, would you please? Did you have to ask? <laughs> don't lose those buttons. They're gonna lose those buttons. <laughs> What do I say if somebody asks me what's wrong with your hands? Oh, I got some kind of itis or something. I don't care. Hello. Hi there. <laughs> you must be Robert Petrie. That's right. Well, I'm Roger Johnson, and this is Joe Clark. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Clark. How do you do? <laughs> oh, excuse my hands are <laughs> wearing gloves. I had a little accident. That's why I have gloves on. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Nothing serious, I hope. No, it's a little sensitivity, kind of. I have to keep the gloves. Oh, uh, excuse me, this is my wife. She always wears gloves. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry that we're late. Well, we're awfully glad you came. <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's an award that we're really proud to be getting. Well, as you all know, Alan Brady uh, was called out of town unexpectedly and could not be here to accept the award in person. However, I'm very happy to tell you that we do have with us uh, one Mr. Robert Petrie, who is the head writer of the show, and his very lovely wife, Laura. <laughs> Thank you. And now, without further ado, we'll just go ahead and let our chairman, Mr. Johnson, uh, make the formal presentation. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. Thank you very much. My friends, since Mr. Petrie is the head writer of the Alan Brady Show, I feel it is most fitting and proper for him to accept this award tonight. Now, as you know, this award is given for, well, let me quote from the citation itself. This award has been granted to the Alan Brady Show for his consistent thematic restatement of the American ideals of equality. Truth is the doorway to understanding. Mr. Petrie, it gives me great pleasure to present this award to your show. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. I, on behalf of uh, everyone down at the Alan Brady Show, I would like to express our appreciation to you for this award. And I certainly hope that we can fulfill this wonderful idea represented on the plaque. The truth is the doorway to understanding. Folks, I, uh, 
don't really feel that I have a right to hold this particular award up here with gloves on my hands. Well, honey, the truth is the doorway does. Excuse me the moment there. We little family discussion here, you know how that is. <laughs> Sonny, look, you need to do anything wrong. <laughs> As I was saying, uh, what was I saying? Oh, it was such a good idea. You were talking about your gloves. Oh, uh, yeah, my gloves. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, I told Mr. Johnson when I came here that I was wearing these gloves because my uh, hands were sensitive. And that actually, I'm wearing them because I'm sensitive about my hands, I, and overly sensitive, I hope. I, I, that's a little confusing, I guess, isn't it? I think I, I, that I can uh, explain that so it makes a little sense to you. You see, my wife was dying a thundercloud suit for our son, and she didn't use a stick. And I came home, and of course, I couldn't have known about using a stick. As a matter of fact, I thought it was dinner at first, and it were my cucks. <laughs> That's, uh, when that, I'm not making that. Uh, uh, let me, uh, my wife and I accidentally stuck our hands in a pot of dye, permanent dye. And we wore these gloves because we were afraid of what you might think, or uh, we were afraid of what you might think. We were thinking. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, let's, uh, Take off our gloves and see if truth is the doorway to understanding. <laughs> if you think this is ridiculous, we got a little boy at home in the same condition. And, uh, and there's a baseball, too, and a stick. Yeah, and one of your clean towels, too. As I... Look around the room now, I, I see that all my fears and all my embarrassments were self-imposed. There's, I can't wait till a day when, when understanding is between everybody such a commonplace thing that they don't have to hand out awards for it. I, I mean, it seemed like understanding ought to be as natural as breathing and they certainly don't give out any awards for breathing. <laughs> <laughs> From what you just said, Mr. Petrie, you are in the right not to have this award. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Johnson, but I, I have to have this award. <laughs> I mean, what's in my heart is very important, but what my boss, Alan Brady, is interested in is what he can mount on his mantelpiece. And if I don't give him this award, he's going to mount my head up there. <laughs> so he says, oh, Lord, why did we invite these people here on this hot day? <laughs> Well, Rob, I can't tell you how much we appreciate your entertaining us tonight. Uh, thank you. You're a very good audience. I don't know whether you're laughing at my jokes or my hands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rob, I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say, anytime we can do anything for you, just ask. Well, thank you, Mr. Johnson. You've all done enough for me already. Uh, huh? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my uh, wife has something she wants to ask you. <laughs> See, I wonder if anybody has found a pearl button. It goes to my husband's gloves. It, no, it's not. It's my husband's gloves to my neighbor's mother and... Oh, no, no, never mind. I'm sorry. No, I'll get it.